Bienvenidos a Fun Reads Fridays. Oh, yeah. Ajá. Uh -huh. Fun Reads Fridays. Ajá. Uh -huh. Hello, hello, everyone. Hello. Oh, Gomez, are you bored already? You just yawned at me. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't? You didn't just yawn at me? No. <laughs> hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to Fun Reads Fridays. Woohoo! And today, we're going to be learning about Mexico. Because recently, it was Dia de los Muertos, which is a common holiday that is celebrated in many Hispanic countries, but also mostly known in Mexico. Ooh, I'm so excited. Are you guys excited to learn today? Yeah? How many of you who have been to Mexico who don't already live there? Oh, wow. How many of you guys live in Mexico? Wow. Bienvenidos todos. Oh, boy. We're so excited today. Oh, and for those of you who are new, Fun Reads Fridays is brought to you by Smart Kids Club. Smart Kids Club is a U.S. digital publisher for libraries, and they have all sorts of stuff, not just different countries that you can learn all about, but also, in this case, todos libros en español también. So they have books in Spanish, too. That way, you can learn all different kinds of languages. It's mostly Spanish, though, but that's okay. But we'll learn all kinds of languages, and we'll get to learn all different types of cultures that are involved, that are in Mexico. <laughs> I'm just so excited. My tongue gets twisted. <laughs> Have you guys ever gotten so excited you trip over your words? Yeah, me too. Huh, so silly. Well, without any further ado, let's go to Mexico with our new friend, Chip. So today, we are going to be reading Chip's Tips on Mexico. Ooh, so we'll learn all different kinds of stuff. All right. Listo? Ready? Yeah? All right. Scooter time, scooter time, scooter, scooter time. Boom, boom. Wow. Countries of the world. Chip's Tips on Mexico, written by Edward Allen Kurtz. Ooh, we're gonna learn all sorts of stuff today. Mexico, or Mexico in English. Mexico is a country that is located on the southern part of North America. And you can see it right there in, in the green, right behind Mexico. So that's what the country looks like. Oh. Mexico's official name is the United Mexican States. It is the sixth largest country in North and South America and covers more than 760,000 square miles. Oh, that's really big. And especially to be the sixth biggest country. Oh, wow. I wonder what the first five are. Hmm. I bet U.S. and Canada are also part of that because they're pretty big too. <laughs> Mexico is the 13th largest independent country in the world and has a population of more than 120 million people. <gasps> That's a lot of people. Wow. This makes Mexico's the world's 11th one, one, most populous country and the most populous Spanish speaking country in the world. Wow. Mexico City is the capital and the largest city in the country. Spanish is the main language of the country because of the Spanish Empire. Most Mexicans are Roman Catholic. Oh, so that's where a large Catholic population is in Mexico. Oh, wow. And look at that. Mexico even has gondolas and they have really pretty cathedrals. That's generally where they go to church. And cathedrals are mostly in the style of Roman Catholic. 
cool. I see three blue words. Can you see the three blue words? That's right. We have independent, populist, and the empire. Hmm. Which one should we learn about first? Let's do that. We'll go in order. Independent. Free from outside control. Ooh. Populous. An area with a large population. Empire. A large group of countries all ruled by one powerful country. Oh, that's almost the opposite of independent. But I guess they gained their independence, so they're no longer under the empire. Or the Spanish Empire, to be specific. Map of Mexico. Oh, do you guys see where Mexico is? Hmm. You're right. It's where the big red dot is. <laughs> that should be easy and helpful. Location. Mexico is located on the Northern Hemisphere. The Western Hemisphere is made up of North America, Central America, and South America. Mexico lies at the lower area of North America, just below United States. The border between Mexico and the United States is about 2,000 miles in length. Hmm. Does anybody know what which state is the biggest, most connected to Mexico? <gasps> That's right, Texas, because <laughs> it's really big, but it's a, a lot of it is across that Mexican border. Oh, wow. That's the biggest anyway. There's a couple of other states, but that's the biggest one. To the south east, Mexico shares a border with Guatemala and Belize. So Mexico shares international borders with just three countries. Wow. And with it being that big, you'd think there'd be more. Wow. The rest of the land of Mexico is bordered by bodies of water. Oh yeah. To the west, Mexico has a very long coastline on the North Pacific Ocean. To the east, Mexico has a coastline of the Gulf of Mexico. It is also a coastline to the southeast to on the Caribbean Sea. Oh, wow. So that's three large bodies of water. Hmm, but only one ocean one gulf, and one sea. Wow, so that's three types, different types of big bodies of water that all connect to the ocean. Cool. Uh-oh, you're right. I did almost skip a blue word. Huh, again, I'm just so excited. Hemisphere. One half of a sphere. The Earth is divided by half by the equator, forming the northern and southern hemisphere. There's also the western and eastern hemisphere, but that gets a little tricky to mark down, whereas the equator is pretty equal. <laughs> Hence, it's the equator. Okay, geography. Wow. So they have all kinds of different locations and areas, like. They can go really high up in the mountains in Pico de Orbaza, Oribaz, Orizaba, <laughs> or Rio Grande. Oh, that looks really cool and very Amazonian. Oh, lots of different temperatures. Mexico, the United States, and Canada make up the continental of North America, or the continent of North America. Oh, there's the big three right there. Rio Grande is the name of the river that forms a part of the border between Mexico and the United States. Mexico has two mountain ranges, 
that run from north to south. The first one is an extension from the famous Rocky Mountain Range. And that runs from Canada all the way through the United States and into Mexico. Wow, I didn't know the Rocky Mountains were that long. That covers three states in one big continent, or three countries in one continent. That's a lot of mountains. Woo. The second mountain range is called the Sierra Madre Oriental. In the central of the in the center of the country, there is an area called the Trans Mexican Volcanic Belt. It is in this area where the highest places in Mexico are found. Pico de Orizaba at 18,701 foot. Popa Capetra at 17,920 feet. Wow. Itza Chihuahua. It's Itza Chihuatl. I think I'm saying that right. Some of these are kind of Aztecian, which were the native uh, Americans, well, native to the Mexico area. So they're called the Aztecs. So some of those have that kind of pronunciation. And it gets a little tricky for me. But this one is 17,343 feet, 100 feet. Whew. And the Nevada, oh, Nevado de tu, tolcu, <laughs> Toluca <laughs> at 15,016 feet. Wow. I see two blue words. Can you guys guess where the first one is? <laughs> That's right. Continent. A large landmass, one of seven found on Earth. Now there's a secret second one. Can you see where it is? Hmm. <gasps> That's right. It's in the two little extra notes at the bottom. Let's see which one. Mexico is made up of 31 states as well as the capital city of Mexico City. Cool. Pico de Orizaba is the tallest mountain in Mexico and it is a dormant volcano. Hmm, which one of those extra notes had the blue word? Dormant, good job. Oh. Temporarily inactive, like a volcano. <gasps> that means it could be a volcano, but it's sleeping right now. Huh. Well, it's a good thing it's dormant. Wow. Climate. Oh, wow. One of the things Mexico is known for is its very pretty beaches. Places I've been to, I've been to Cancun before, and it's a lot of fun to go to. Mexico is divided into two different climate zones. The northern part of the country has a temperate climate with cool temperatures during the winter months. The south of this is a tropical climate zone where temperatures stay very much the same throughout the whole year. The only time the temperature changes is in the southern tropical zones is when you move from one elevation to another. Oh, so I guess the higher you go, the colder it gets. <laughs> Temperatures at sea level can be warm. And that's why it's nice and cozy and often where a lot of people go to vacation. But if you travel high up in the mountains, the temperature drops quickly and you get cold. <laughs> there is less rainfall in the northern temperate zone there are areas in this zone that can be quite dry. Oh, so I guess that's kind of like a desert where there's not a lot of rain and probably some drought. But 
I'm not sure if it says for sure, so I could be wrong. But in the southern tropical zone, there can be lots of rainfall, and this area can see hurricanes. Ugh, I don't like hurricanes. They're not as fun, or at all fun. <laughs> wow, and I see two blue words. Can you see which ones are the blue words? That's right, temperate and elevation. Hmm, let's go backwards this time. Elevation, like altitude, it's the height above sea or ground level. Wow. Temperate, having a mild climate, easy going. <laughs> History. Mexico has a long history that began 10,000 years ago. Wow. Scientists have found stone tools that remain to a campfire areas in the Valley of Mexico that date from this time in history. Wow. So they found tools that are 10,000 years old. That's a lot older than everybody, I think. Wow, do you guys know anybody that's 10,000 years old? No, me either. Wow. At first, humans were hunter-gatherers, but later they began to grow beans, corn, tomatoes in this area. Before the arrival of the Europeans, there were several indigenous groups who lived in this area, including Mayans, and the Aztecs. The Spanish, the Spanish conquered Mexico in 1519. The Spanish brought with them a disease called smallpox. The disease killed millions of indigenous people. During the Spanish empire, Mexico City was chosen to be the capital and Mexico gained its independence in 1821. Wow. That's a long time to be under the Spanish Empire, huh? I see three extra notes. Let's see what Chip has to say. The first printing press in North America was used in Mexico City in 1539. Oh, wow. The flag of Mexico is green. Oh, I forgot I did these backwards, so I have to try and remember where they are. Is green, white, and red with an eagle in the middle. The national Spanish symbol of Mexico. Oh, they have eagles too. That's also the US's symbol, but I think they're different types of eagles. It is found on the central white part of the flag. So just like this, well, backwards. <laughs> oh, and Oldest university in North America is the National University of Mexico, founded in 1551 by Charles V of Spain. Oh, so the V is actually a Roman numeral. So it'd be Charles V of Spain. I think that was the king of Spain at the time. Oh, but wow, look at all the cool things like we can see the ancient Mayan statue, as well as the Independence Monument of Mexico. And I noticed two blue words. Do you remember which two? Yep, indigenous and hunter-gatherers. Hmm. Let's see, we'll do this one first. Hunter-gatherers, someone who hunts, and fishes and gathers for wild food. Oh. Indigenous. Native or originating in a particular region. Oh. Major cities. Zocalo and Guadalajara. Oh. Those are two, just two of them. Wow. Mexico City is the largest city and the capital of Mexico. It has a population of more than 8 million people. Wow. And it's 
banking center of the country. So that's where all the money goes. It sits at a high elevation of 7,350 feet in the Valley of Mexico. Wow, it's pretty high. Mexico City is the oldest capital in North America and South America. Wow. So Mexico, I think, is even older than us in the U.S. Wow. Ecatepec is Mexico's second largest city. It has a population of about 1.6 million people. Wow. And it's a suburb of Mexican City or Mexico City. That's a really big suburb. Oh, that's a lot of people too. Hey, I think that's almost one, one small part of the capital. But wow, that's a lot of people. With a population of 1.5 million people, Guadalajara is the third most populous city in Mexico. That's the city with the gazebo in front. Wow, it's so pretty. Guadalajara is a popular tourist destination. It is home of mariachi music and hosts many interesting sporting events, film festivals, and the Guadalajara International Book Fair. Oh, that's cool. So all the really fun festivals and events that they have is in Guadalajara. And I see one blue word, and that one's a fun one. Mariachi, traditional Mexican folk music. Oh, they're so much fun. Some places up here or in some restaurants, they even have a live, a live playing of traditional folk music or live mariachi bands. And it's really cool. Culture. Wow, look at all those colors. I love Mexican food. It has a lot of bright and interesting colors. The Mexican, the culture of Mexico is a combination of indigenous cultures and Spanish cultures brought to Mexico during the 300 years of the Spanish empire. Wow, that's a long time. Mezio. Mezio is the word that describes someone of mixed race in Latin America. Usually the result of having one parent of an indigenous background and another parent of a Spanish background. Oh, wow. Mexico is known for its writers and some of them lived hundreds of years before the Spanish arrived. Wow. Today, there are famous Mexican writers like Carlos Fuentes and Octavia Paz. Two famous painters were Diego, Rorriva, Vivri, Diego Riviera and Frida Kahlo. I love Frida Kahlo's work. It's really, really cool. Mexican food is known for its fresh ingredients and zesty flavors. And it's so colorful. I mean, look at all those colors. Wow. And I see three notes from Chip. A zacchu. Zacahuil is a Mexican tamale that is three feet long and weighs 150 pounds. Wow, that's a big tamale. I wonder how many people it'll take to finish all that. Wow. And I wonder how long it takes to make. I bet that takes all day or a couple of days. Woo. I'd want to try it though. It sounds so good. Some of the most popular dishes in Mexico are burritos, enchiladas, and tacos. Football, or soccer here in the States, is the most popular sport in Mexico. Mexico hosted the Football World Cup in 1970 and 1986. Oh, I love the World Cup. That one's so much fun. And I do see a blue word. Are you guys ready to try it? Yeah? Okay. Mezio, someone of mixed race, usually Spanish and Native American. Ooh. Famous people. Oh, oh, there's a famous football player right there. 
many sports people born in Mexico. These include soccer players, Javier Hernandez, Guillermo Ocha, Ochoa, Ochoa, and Giovanni Dos Santos. Boxers such as Saul Alaveras, Alvarez, and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Ooh. And wrestlers like Alberto Del Rio, Rey Mysterio Sr., and Mystico. Oh, my husband loves wrestling, so he knows all about those. And luchador is a very particular type of wrestling. <laughs> he has a couple of masks. Oh, I should have brought them. Oh, well, I should have asked for permission first before I brought them. But yeah, they have a specific type. So they have to wear super masks, kind of like this, but it goes all over their head from the front and the back. So, and it's very, very important that they have to keep it on at all times. <laughs> it's really fun. And they do lots of flip de doos too. <laughs> Mexico has procured several well-known musicians, such as Julian Alvarez, Ariel Camacho, Vincente, Vincente Fernandez, Juan Gabriel, Carlos Santana. I know him. I love his guitar playing. Juan, and Juan, you, oh, Joan Sebastian. Some of Mexico's artists, such as Frida Kahlo, Jose Guadalupe Posada, and Diego Rivera, have become famous around the world. Mexico has also procured important writers such as journalists like Ana Maria Alavero, Alvarado, Susana Chavez, Jespirito, Octavia Paz, and Brett Steffens. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of people. Festivals! These are so much fun! Oh, Vallador Dolid. Oh. And Guadalajara, oh, they look like they have a like a rodeo show. Oh, cool. There are many famous festivals that take place throughout the year in Mexico. Most of these are the very colorful and fun and interesting to, for visitors to see. The Hidalgo area has several festivities and fairs combine religion, tradition, and color. <laughs> At the horse fair in Pachua, Pachuca, you can see the horses show, the horse show, and every amusement park rides and handcrafts. Oh. There are many art festivals in Michoacan, 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 several times during the year. These include dance, films, food, handicrafts, and music. In San Miguel del Alente, there are religious fiestas, parades, fe films, and classical music performances. For, complete, for something completely different, there are chariar, charerias, charayas in Guadalajara, where you can experience the excitement of horse races, riding, roping, and more. So it's basically a rodeo. Woo. Holidays! So every country has their own fun holidays. Let's find out what Mexico's is. When Spain conquered Mexico, it was brought, it brought its religion with it. This is why most Mexicans are Roman Catholic. Some of the Mexican holidays are religious while others are secular. New Year's Day is celebrated on January 1st, like everywhere, Whew. as it is all around the world. Epiphany marks the day when the three wise men visited the child Jesus in Bethlehem. My grandma, who's from Spain, makes this beautiful nativity scene, and she refuses to take it down until after Epiphany. Constitution Day is held on the first Monday in February, while an amazing birthday of an important president, Benito Juarez, is celebrated on March 21st. May 1st is Labor Day, while September 16th is a day in Mexico that celebrates its Independence Day. All Saints Day is November 1st, 
And this celebrates, because in Roman Catholic religion, there are lots of different kinds of saints. And each saint sometimes have their own days, and some of them don't. But the ones that don't have their days celebrated with a bunch of other saints on November 1st, which is All Saints Day. And All Souls Day, otherwise known as Dia de los Muertos, is held on November 2nd. And this day is the day where we celebrate those we have lost. But we celebrate it in a very big way, or at least they do in Mexico. My mom has told me that they do celebrate it in other Spanish-speaking countries. I just know it's mostly associated with Mexico. December 25th is, of course, Christmas. <laughs> Major occupations. Mexico has many natural resources. There are many jobs that are available. Some people work in the oil and gas industry, extracting, refining, and exploring, exporting <laughs> the fi finished product to countries around the world. Other things that are produced in Mexico include computers, electronics, mobile phones, televisions, and other items. Mexico produces more cars and trucks than Canada or the United States. Wow, that's really impressive. I didn't know that. Mexico City is a major financial center, so there are many banking jobs. Mexico has the fourth largest hydroelectronic plant in the world. Wow. Mexico's biggest trade partner is the United States. Oh, and Chip left, uh, left us another note. Chilies, chocolate, and corn were introduced to all places all over the world from Mexico. So that's where chocolate comes from. Oh, and Mexican chocolate is really, really, really good. Especially their hot chocolate. Oh, it warms up, especially when it's getting colder outside. Huh. And I see a blue word. Hydroelectronic. Hydroelectric. Power that is created by flowing water over a dam. Wow. Animals. Yay, I love animals. Mexico is full of interesting animals, like the opossum, which is a marsupial, and it carries its young in a pouch, like the kangaroo, until the baby is ready to leave the pouch and live on its own. There are manatees and dugongs that live in the coastal marine air waters. There's rivers, swamps, ooh, estuaries, and marine wetlands. They are sometimes called sea cows. <gasps> and look, there's a picture of a manatee right there. Wow. Oh, my cousin loves manatees. Do you guys like, what's your favorite animal so far? Ooh, oh, I think we're getting to some of them. Other interesting animals that live in Mexico include armadillos, anteaters, jaguars, and I remember some of you saying that, spider monkeys, and flying squirrels. <laughs> Ooh, and there's one that looks kind of like a koala. I think it's called a coati. Oh, he looks so cute. <laughs> Some of the marine animals include a humpback whales, dolphins, and porpoises. There are birds like egrets, flamingos, herons, and the rare California condor. And Chip left us a note. The golden eagle is the national symbol of Mexico, and it's found on the Mexican coat of arms. Oh yeah, we went over that when we were talking about its flag. And I see three blue words. Let's find them all out. Marsupial. An animal whose babies is in its mother's pouch where it goes. Oh. Marine. Boop. Having to do with the sea or ocean. Oh. Boop. Boop. Estuaries. The mouth of a river where it meets the ocean or sea. Oh, wow. That's really cool. There's a lot of really pretty animals. Plants. Ooh, I love the plant, especially the desert plant. 
It's so pretty and it's so blue. <laughs> there is a huge variety of interesting plants that live in Mexico. Some of these are well known like the cactus and the yucca with its amazing tall flower. And the agave plant, which is another succulent plant like a cactus. It can live in with very little water. Bougainvillea villas grow in many parts of the world, including Mexico, where you can find them in several different colors, such as red, pink, or purple. Oh, wow, look at the prickly pear cactus. Hey, look at those pretty colors. Woo. The Mexican bush sage is a shrub that attracts butterflies, birds, and bees. Wow. It has silver, silver gray stems and leaves that are purple flowers and purple flowers in the spring. Oh, the plant is called the yellow bells in a small shrub with the bright flowers in the same shape of a tube. Oh, that's a lot of different types of cacti. <laughs> the dahlia is well-known flowering plant that is indigenous to Mexico. Oh, those are really pretty. Visiting. Yes, right, you can visit Mexico. There's a lot of really neat stuff to do. Mexico is an exciting place to visit. Many people fly into Mexico City and start their visit there. Here they can explore the old colonial part of the city called Centro Historico with the Plaza de la Constitución, the Aztec Templo Mayer, and more. And look, it's got Chichen Itza. When I was really, really, really little, they used to let us climb up there, but I don't think they do that anymore because it's really, really old. And to be honest, I was really scared when I was up there. It's so high. Ugh. <laughs> People who want some uh, whale watching will do will want to head to Baja California. Northern, Me Northern Mexico is made up of mountains and deserts, and many visitors ignore this part of Mexico. So it's perfect if you want to explore the uncrowded part of Mexico. People are interested in the ancient Mayan history will definitely want to explore Yucatan Peninsula with all its treasures and famous Chichen Itza. It is one of the seven wonders of the world. And like I said, it's really cool. <laughs> awesome. Good job, you guys. You guys are so good. Oh, wow. We learned a lot about the country of Mexico. Oh, boy. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's story and you can visit other countries with Chip as your guide. You can do so by joining the Smart Kids Club app. You can find those on both the Google App Store and the Apple App Store. And in both places, you can read a lot of different books, not just different countries, but like I said, you can also learn books in Spanish too. So when you do visit those countries, you know how to speak a little bit at least. <laughs> But today was really, really fun. And I hope you guys had a good day. Oh, I'm excited for next week. Oh, hmm. But I still don't know what we're reading. I guess you'll have to come back and find out. Bye, everyone. I hope to see you guys next week. Oh, and if you want to find out what's coming up, not just in what we're reading, but in other stuff that Smart Kids Club is up to, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and I think threads as well. All right, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.